Hi, it's Gadget UK here. Um, on my last video I mentioned the A520 modulator on the Amiga and uh, the common fault that you get with those where you get sort of a uh, coloured tint effectively across the picture. Um, and the simple resolution of replacing uh, the Motorola chip that's in there. Um, I got a bit mixed up when I did that video, I couldn't remember the exact part number, I think it's MC1377P. Um, so I'll just do a quick tear down on that, it's only going to take a few minutes and show you exactly which chip you know, what to replace in there. You can buy the part on eBay, it's pretty readily available. Um, usually about three or four pounds, I think, with a bit of postage. Uh, I was lucky enough, I already had one in stock from many years ago when I used to repair TVs. So let's get in there. Here's the Amiga uh, A520 uh, modulator, pretty standard thing. Um, I'm not familiar with it, there, there must be uh, an NTSC version of this. It's probably some jumper or something inside because the actual uh, MC1377P chip that's in here is a dual purpose PAL slash NTSC um, encoder effectively so you know it just takes the way this works it takes three pins in there that uh, are the primary ones really used by um, I think it's I think it's on the circuit diagram it's ARAGAB which is analog uh, red green blue um, it takes that analog signal and um, encodes it in such a way that then the remainder part of the modulator there can either output RF from the top and obviously your composite video out and that's the main reason you would want to use one of these these days you know you could just connect your Amiga via RF but you get a pretty noisy picture as it demodulates the signal and stuff because um, obviously you've got sound modulated on there as well um, it's, it's better to use the, the video out of, of this the composite you get a, a cleaner picture and of course if you can find on eBay the an RGB cable and just straight into SCART on your TV that is actually an even preferable way and I guess moving up from that uh, the, 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 the ultimate way to view uh, Amigas these days probably is uh, via an Indivision um, chip. I'm not sure whether you can get those for the older system but you can certainly get one for the um, 600 I think and certainly the 1200 uh, where it fits sort of over uh, the, one of the graphics chips in there. Is it Alice? I forget. Um, and then connect that to a VGA monitor. Anyway, right, okay. So in order to get in this um, these are actually push fits, the deceptive. You can look all around it and go, I don't see any screws of these mounts, they're not solid plastic, solid moulding. It's just two separate parts that are press fitted together. I think there's like a point in there, point sort of there, point there, point there, and it's like plastic inserts. I mean, if I sort of uh, pull this a bit at the back here, you can probably see, can you see there's a gap? It starts to split pretty easy. So I'm just going to um, use a flat bladed screwdriver, that's all you need or preferably if it's really difficult, if you're finding you're struggling to get in there, a jeweler screwdriver and just sort of edge the fitting apart. The recommended way to do it is actually to start on the back the, um, the D-type connector, that's probably the best place to start, a lot of people recommend. Uh, there we go, you can see that's going to part now, pretty easy, and you can see it is push fit. I'm amazed actually, I'm able to do this with one hand. The last one of these I did, I did need to use the jeweler screwdriver, there we go. Uh, and I think that should come off, there we go. So you've got your um, RF modulator at the back there with a uh, composite out and I don't know if I can, you can see this very clearly, I'll just bend that chip there out of the way slightly and there is your Motorola 1377P, I'll just see if I can zoom. There we go, that's a slightly more focused shot. So you can see that chip and basically as I say that takes your RGP pins in. There's a few capacitors and sort of uh, passive components and things there, resistors that essentially just pass the signal through. I don't know what that one in the middle there is, some sort of bespoke package that's um, in some sort of ceramic, I don't know what that is. Um, and it feeds it into that, uh, that chip and the outputs obviously then feed into your uh, RF modulator. So um, that's pretty much it really. Um, thanks for watching, I'll uh, see you soon.